What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video I'm going to be clarifying the difference between the architectural columns in Revit and structural columns in Revit. Now these two, even though they look quite similar and they uh, are maybe quite similar uh, when it comes to rendering or showing off your model, they are inherently quite different and they are going to be used uh, differently in different situations. Uh, so I decided that, uh, that it would be a good idea to make a complete tutorial on how to use these columns, what's the difference between them and how to approach placing them inside of your Revit projects. Uh, now before I get into the tutorial, I would just like to ask you to like this video, it helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm and also make sure to subscribe because I make useful Revit tutorials each week. Also I make some courses, I've got beginner, intermediate and advanced courses, they're all up on my website, so that's the first link in the description of this video, so check it out if you're interested and also feel free to check out my Patreon there, I've got some of my courses as well as all of my Revit project files. So check it out, that's going to be the second link in the description. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get straight into the tutorial. So here we are in Revit and we're going to be creating a new model. So just go here to models to new and then I'm going to pick out the architectural template for this one. And it actually doesn't really matter are you using an architectural or a structural template. Uh, your uh, uh, structural and architectural columns are going to be represented pretty much in the same way. Okay, now let's take a look at these two types of columns. Now, the most interesting difference between these two types of columns uh, it comes to show when it comes to uh, kind of uh, the way that they interact with walls. So what I'm going to do now is just create a simple wall first. So let's go here to the wall tool and then I'm going to create a rectangle something like that. There we go. Hit the escape key a couple of times. And now I'm just going to select this wall, maybe make the height up to level two. And also I'm going to change the uh, here, the wall type and the properties, just change it to something that has a, bit, a few more layers. So maybe something like this. And then just in order to see those layers, let's switch this to a fine level of detail. Uh, now, one more thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch this to realistic and uh, you're going to uh, understand why I'm doing this in a, in a moment or two. Uh, now, one more thing, keep in mind that I have 10 lines toggled on. So if I toggle it off, it looks like this. Uh, now, the reason why I like to keep it on is because now we can see this 10 layer over here, the finished material layer. Okay, so there we go. We have our uh, walls in place. Now, to create uh, either architectural or structural columns, you can just go here to the architecture tab and then by default, on the architecture tab here we have the structural column. So even though this is the architecture tab, the first default is the structural column. And if you want to get to the architectural column, you have to open up the drop menu and then go to the architectural column. Also, you will notice that the structural column has the CL shortcut, so you can use the shortcut for that. And the architectural column doesn't really have a shortcut. So if we switch here to the structure tab, here uh, we just have the structural column. Uh, so just keep that in mind. This is a, a kind of a way that Revit is telling us that uh, structural columns are the main ones to use. And then if you have to use architectural columns, yeah, sure, here you go. Uh, but in most cases, you're going to stick uh, with those structural columns. Okay, so uh, first, uh, let's start off with the architectural column. So I'm just going to click here. And then you will notice that we have just a few loaded in and we have a few dimensions here, we have uh, a couple of square ones, and then one rectangle. And I'm just going to go with the largest one. And the interaction that these columns have with the uh, environment or with the walls is quite unique. So if I just place this column here, and uh, one more thing just to keep in mind uh, here, as, as you can see, it says height. So uh, it measures height and it goes up to level two. So just keep this in mind because it's going to be different for the structural column. Okay, so now I'm just going to place this here and there we go. Now I'm just going to hit the escape key a couple of times and we're done. So as you can see, even though I have placed this column here, uh, it kind of took the materials off this wall. So here we have that brick. Maybe if I switch this to consistent colors. Yeah, I think this looks way better. Okay. Uh, so as you can see, it's using the finished material here on the outside and here it's using this material and the, uh, the finished material kind of wraps around. So it looks kind of odd. It 
kind of blends inside of the walls. And if you start moving this around, it's going to look even weirder. So just keep that in mind. They have this weird interaction with all of your wall layers, where it's going to kind of try to blend in and uh, kind of take on the material of those uh, of the wall. Uh, now you can select your column and here if I just move this off to the side a little bit, if I open up the edit type menu you're going to uh, notice that here we have the material setting. So you can add a material there and let's add something. Let's try concrete. I don't know, cast and suit. Apply, okay. There we go. So you can apply material, but it's still going to appear as uh, as it has these uh, these layers as materials. Now let's take a look at the structural column on the other hand, just to see the difference. So if I start the structural column, you can just click here or use the CL shortcut. Uh, first, you're going to notice that here uh, in the properties, uh, it's uh, we on, we only have this steel column. So let's uh, let's find something a bit closer to this architectural column. So I'm just going to go here to load family and then uh, let's see. Yeah, so I'm here in structural columns. So just go here to the US metric library or imperial library if you're using imperial units. Uh, you want to search for your structural columns and then let's search for concrete. And then here I'm just going to go with I don't know. Let's go with square a column open that up and there we go. Let's yeah, let's stick with this one. Anyways, uh, something that you will notice that in most cases uh, here and now it currently says height, I guess that's because we've already placed one uh, column, but usually it's going to stick with depth uh, at first when you start your structural column. So uh, just keep that in mind, make sure to switch this to height. Now in this case, it's already switched to height so that that's okay. Uh, anyways, uh, so here uh, if I place this column, it's going to look like this. So if I just hit the escape key a couple of times, there you go. So this column doesn't really interact with those layers. It's kind of overlapping over our wall. Also, if I select this column, the structural column, uh, you're going to notice that here inside of the properties menu, we have the structural material as an instance parameter. So you may have remembered that here we didn't have that. We had to go into edit type. So this is a type parameter for the uh, for our architectural column and then for the structural column it's the instance parameter so that's the uh, that's the difference uh, with that with the material setting and here the material is already set to concrete cast in place and you can see that here from the material of the column uh, now uh, one way to approach these columns is that architectural columns are just cosmetic work. So you're just trying to make the appearance of a column or maybe if you do have a column over here, uh, you might want to kind of wrap it around inside of this column, maybe switch to a smaller dimension. Yeah, so you might want to add some sort of a finished material around that or something like that. So your structural column is going to carry the actual loads and it's actually an analytical element. So it can be used in calculations later on. And uh, you use the architectural columns just as kind of for cosmetic purposes uh, to kind of add the finished material because you can't really add finished material around your regular uh, columns. Uh, now, also something to keep in mind when when it comes to placing these columns like this in Revit, and maybe if we turn on uh, ten uh, lines here, uh, one thing that they like to do. So let's say I've placed this column inside of the wall. Let's see, can I find a smaller one? No. Uh, okay. So anyways, uh, we have placed this column inside of the wall. So what they like to do is go to the Modify tab and then go to Join Geometry. Now what they want to do is join this column with the wall. There we go. Join it with this wall. Yeah, there we go. Okay, these are all joined up now. Okay. So what this basically means is if I go into the 3D view, you're going to notice that here we have that uh, that column. And now if I just select this column and perhaps hide it, so let's hide this element in the view, it's going to leave an open hole here inside of this wall. Now if I select this architecture column and decide to hide element, 
it doesn't do that. So basically this, uh, uh, when we use that join geometry tool, we have basically uh, cut out the part of the wall where the column is standing. So we don't want to calculate that material twice. So that's why you want to use the join geometry tool and you want to make that opening. So just keep that in mind. That's what you want to do. So let's just reset temporary height isolate. There we go, go back into level one. So basically you would use structural columns to add well all of the structural uh, parts of the building. You can hide them inside walls, you can hide them inside of these uh, structural columns. Okay, here we have to you know, join geometry like that. There we go. So uh, you have to join everything up, so just keep that in mind. Okay, is everything joined? I guess it is. Anyways. So that's the idea behind using columns in Revit and the difference between a structural columns and your architectural columns. Now, one more thing, uh, if I go here to architecture, go to column, and let's start off the architectural column. Uh, as far as placement options, you really only have these. So you can uh, set up the height, the, the, the level, and then also room bounding, and that's pretty much it. Here, we don't really have any options. We can load in a column or model it in place, but, if I hit the escape key a couple of times and then go to the structural column, you will notice that we have many, many more options. So we have the option for a vertical column, which is a regular vertical column, and we have a slanted column, which basically allows us to set the level one and then uh, level two. So basically the first click of the column and the second click of the column. So here, if I set the, the first click at level one at zero and the second click at level two at zero, and click here once and then click here a second time. And now if I go into 3D, so as you can see, it goes from the from level one up to level two, but it's of course slanted by the distance that uh, I have created there. Uh, you get the point. So that's the, that's the option here for those slanted columns. And then also let's go back into level one and let's go here to grids and let's add a couple of grids like that. Now, uh, also you will get the option for these structural columns to uh, place them at uh, grids, uh, but only vertical columns. So you can place them here, as you can see, at grid intersections. So you just select two grids and in the column will appear, but, but just keep in mind that you have to hit finish and there we go, the column will appear. And also, if you go here to architectural column, place one column here, and then you go to column again, and then you go to your structural column, you can place it at columns. So you basically select the column, and as you can see, your structural column will be placed inside of your architectural column. Hit finish. Okay, there we go. So basically these uh, these tools are, or these two types of columns are uh, designed to work in conjunction with each other. And I hope you have now completely understood the differences between these two types of uh, types of columns and how to apply them in real life. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you want to download all of my Revit project files, check out my Patreon. It's in the description of this video. And also check out my website if you're interested in some beginner intermediate or advanced Revit courses. I've got much, much more content and a much, uh, much longer courses, uh, anywhere from one up to 16 hours. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I'll be back with another tutorial in a couple of days. Have a nice day.